The Calgary Police Service Child Abuse Unit has charged a man with two historical sexual assaults dating back to the 1970s. The charges relate to two female victims who knew the accused as a pastor at a Northwest Calgary Baptist Church. The allegations came to the attention of police after similar, a similar case in 2012 where another leader at the same church was charged with sexually assaulting three male victims in the 1980s and the 1990s. The most recent investigation revealed the alleged sexual abuse against one of the females began in 1979 when the victim was five years old and continued until she was 15. The other victim was nine years old when the alleged abuse began in 1986 and it continued until she was 18. In both cases, the victims were parishioners at the Baptist Church where the accused was a religious leader and teacher. The assaults allegedly occurred in the church and at the accused neighbor, then neighboring home. On Wednesday, April 9th, Police arrested and charged Thomas Larry Jones, 69 years of age, of Carstairs, Alberta. He is charged with indecent assault of a female, three counts of gross indecency, four counts of sexual assault, two counts of sexual interference, and two counts of sexual exploitation. I encourage anyone with information on this or any other sexual assault, regardless of when it occurred, to come forward to police. And before I answer any of your questions, I just want to clarify the number of charges that Mr. Jones is facing. Uh, during the time of these alleged offenses, there was three changes in legislation. There's the 1983 and prior criminal code charges, the 1983 to 1988 criminal charges, and then the 1988 to present criminal charges. And you can kind of see the evolution of the criminal charges in the wording of the charges with indecent assault of a female being a early charge to where we move to sexual assault, sexual interference, and sexual exploitation. So, if anyone has any questions, please go ahead. So, you, these um, 2012 uh, arrests, I mean, are these, was that individual who was, who was convicted, I guess, at that time, is it, is it linked? Did, did that have, did Mr. Jones have any influence or vice versa on, on that? That's a good question. That's certainly something that we turned our turned our mind to and uh, kept the investigation open to that, that there's two people in the same uh, church who both end up, uh, one being charged uh, and then uh, serving a sentence now in Bowdoin Institution, and now Mr. Jones now being alleged of uh, similar offenses. Um, the earlier offenses, the person who's already uh, serving a sentence, those offenses were against male victims, and uh, these are against female victims. And uh, there's no indication for us that these two people uh, were working together uh, in any way. Can you tell us a little bit about what, how exactly the allegations came to light? Did they come forward or did you find out about them or how did it kind of work out? Sure. Uh, so originally uh, the first investigation came to light when the, uh, the offender turned himself into uh, an RCMP office and because the offenses happened in Calgary, uh, we held jurisdiction for the investigation. During that investigation, uh, officers spoke to a number of people involved in the, in the church at that time, including a number of youth, and during those interviews, a disclosure about Mr. Jones was received. Once the uh, initial investigation was concluded, that we then turned our attention to this investigation. Uh, as it happened 20 to 30 years ago, uh, these people are now adults and have spread themselves uh, across Canada, so it did take a bit of time. Uh, in order to track these people down. There's been name changes, uh, significant changes in, in where they live. And uh, once we were satisfied that we had spoken to enough people, uh, we came to a point where uh, Mr. Jones needed to be arrested and charged. Sir, can you who turned himself into The original investigation was in regards to a man named Russell Rodman, who was the other uh, church leader. Uh, and he was a pastor as well? Yes. I believe uh, Mr. Rodman was uh, convicted for offenses against three males and uh, this investigation uh, Mr. Jones has been charged with offenses against two females. Have you been in contact at all with the two women and I'm just wondering what their reaction is now that charges have been laid? Yeah, I've been in uh, consistent contact with them right up until uh, the last few days and they were aware that Mr. Jones was going to be arrested uh, and charged yesterday and they were happy to hear that. Uh, that uh, them coming forward it was, has resulted uh, in an investigation that's given enough evidence where charges could be laid today and happy to see that they've received closure to that point anyways that, uh, that Mr. Jones is going to answer for what he did uh, to them in court. Are they dealing with 
Um, there's been a lot of time that's passed since now uh, and then. Um, they're certainly uh, uh, aware of and had resources made available to them. Um, for each person, it's a unique experience and uh, how they deal with it and the support from the community and the family around them is going to be an individual experience for each person. Um, I know from meeting with them and talking with them and uh, I guess developing a relationship with them over the last uh, several months that uh, they do have supports in place and um, relatively speaking, you know, without putting words in their mouths, um, they're moving forward, which is nice to see. What Baptist church was it? There's uh, Brentwood and uh, Hawkwood. The important thing to realize is that uh, this isn't about an institution. Uh, Places of worship, places of business don't commit these offenses. It's people who commit these offenses against other people. Uh, and I'd like the focus to remain on uh, Mr. Jones and not, uh, not any specific Baptist church or even the Baptist faith uh, specifically. Can you tell us any more about Mr. Jones and maybe any past legal dealings he may have had? I know you guys are locking you down those roads, but what can you tell us about that? Well, obviously, when Mr. Jones was uh, identified to us as a suspect, we're going to uh, do a lot of the same searches that you guys do in terms of open source media uh, and look into a person's past to give us a better idea of, of who we're dealing with and what's happened since uh, the late 90s when uh, Mr. Jones left this church and today. However, uh, in regards to anything, anything specific, I can't comment any more than that. So we can't say whether or not before this he was known to police? Uh, no, I can't comment on that. So this was obvious, he was obviously in the position of Uh, I would certainly consider a pastor and a teacher to be a position of uh, authority and trust. What kind of a teacher was he? He was a school teacher. Was it a public school or was it a, a religious school? Or? They, ran a, they ran a school out of the uh, church basement. It would be typical school, I guess, would be the best way to answer that. It wasn't a, a weekend school or a drop-in okay, school or anything. School. But like no, it would be a more similar to a uh, the public school system that we know now. Was Mr. Bonner a teacher there as well? I don't know. Now, what was the nature of the, you said the age, what were the, age, the ages where it started and finished? Was this so there's a, there's a, time frame of the where the allegations would fit in and it would be from 1979 to 1995 but that would be the two victims and there's an overlap in those two time periods as well because they're not the same age how and rare is it to come upon a situation like this where you now arrested in a two-year time frame two pastors for historical sexual assault from the same institution it's a very unique situation It'd be very uncommon for us to come across uh, two people in the same organization that uh, uh, would be, to the best of our knowledge, uh, unknowing to each other uh, there being abuse going on against uh, different preferred victims, one being male, one being female. And Mr. Jones, he was arrested at his home? Uh, no, he turned himself in uh, at my request to our Westwind's office. Yep, he was, uh, he was cooperative and, uh, and we agreed upon a time and he turned himself in at that time. I'm sorry, you said that there were three changes to the legislation at the time that he committed the crimes to, to now. Could you uh, say what those are? Well, the legislation changed in 1983. So there, any potential offenses that occurred from 1983 prior, I have to lay those charges as they're in the criminal code so that the courts have a chance to consider those. Then there's the 1983 to 88 and then the 88 going forward. Um, I guess the changes would be, you know, an evolution of uh, how sexual assault and child abuse is viewed. Um, it's from a more traditional standpoint, and you can tell by the, the, just the wording of them, especially if you go back and read a criminal code from 1983, the, uh, uh, how it looks upon, uh, the criminal code looks upon children and, and women is a lot different than it is today. So what does that mean for uh, prosecution? 
Uh, it just means it's going to be a little more complicated for the for the for the crown because uh, and the and the courts in general because they have three pieces of legislation they're going to have to consider, determine uh, if the alleged offenses fit into which piece of legislation, and then make that decision from there. But uh, our, our charges and the and the ones here for us today were uh, based on the information that we had today and then in consultation with, with the Crown because it is a bit of a unique situation that there's three changes in legislation in an offence period of 1979 to 1995. Can you tell us when Mr. Jones stopped being a pastor? Uh, this church kind of came to a collapse in the very early 90s. Um, in part, I think, uh, quite a bit because of the allegations that were coming to light um, between, the, between these uh, two victims. So the church had come to a point where it, it kind of collapsed and uh, he left the church at that time. Does the church still exist today? Yes. How long was he a teacher for? I'm not sure. I don't have that off the top of my head, sorry. So these allegations the offenses occurred along uh, quite a while ago, yeah. But I mean, you said that it, it, it fell apart in the early 90s, so I mean, were they because of the allegations coming up? Yeah, the information that we received from talking to a number of the, the people involved in the church at that time was that these allegations started to come to light and they were addressed in some ways by the members of the church at that time, uh, as well intentioned as the people were to deal with what they knew at the time, um, the church kind of uh, folded in uh, upon itself and a new leader was uh, put in place and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Jones left the church. So the police were never brought in at all during that time? Not to the church uh, specifically. We never were invited in to uh, participate in any investigation uh, in regards to the church. So, originally, one of these uh, one of these victims came forward in 1993. Uh, there was an investigation by the child abuse unit at that time. Unfortunately, there was insufficient evidence to proceed uh, with an investigation, and that was uh, there's the insufficient evidence as well as a number of other factors that were considered at that time. Um, and then, when uh, Mr. Rodman turned himself in, uh, the door was opened again, so to speak and uh, the same person uh, uh, was interviewed again and uh, chose to participate in the justice system pro in process as well as another victim was identified. Yes. And uh, Mr. Jones, was he guilty for both victims at the time? Yes. Was this the same pastor who was involved in the kind of a fight over uh, his right to own school? Because quite a number of years back, did he say Pastor Jones? Do you know some good open source media checks will. Uh, <laughs> identify Mr. Jones's past and I don't think you'll have any mistake of identity.